Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of VeChain, taking a look at the price action of what's been going on with the VET token and what I think is on the horizon next. As I get into this video if you find it useful and informative then smash that like button I do appreciate that. Let's see if we can get that likes uh, kind of up to maybe a thousand. Let's see if we can do that. It'd be amazing if we can. And if you're new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell selecting all those notifications and you will not miss another video update. Um, check it out. I don't think uh, you'll be disappointed by what you find on the channel. Let's jump down into this though, right? Um, VeChain paired up with the USDT on the hourly chart and Binance is the data source. Now, taking a look at this, we have this interesting kind of structure to the downside over here, this five wave move. I think this is some kind of zigzag pattern. We kind of put that to bed and we have seen this nice run to the upside. Now, this run to the upside is causing me um, a few areas of concern. I want to be able to sit here and say, this looks like we're going in an impulsive five wave structure to the upside, but I don't think that's necessarily true. So I'm going to try to break this down in the way that I'm looking at it and uh, let you guys kind of get your thoughts and opinions also in the comment section as to whether you think this is going to be turning into an impulsive structure and we're just a little bit on the early side of it or whether or not this actually is all corrective and we're going to come down in a bigger way. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Let me run you through what I'm looking at though, right? Um, so I'm going to park this area just here um, for a second, right? So I'm not too concerned over this little bit, not just right now. What I'm trying to ascertain is the internal workings of this move up here, okay? Because we're looks really really impulsive in places right and we see these kind of runs and it does to me look like we have some pretty good areas in here but some of them are also causing me some areas of concern so let's go ahead and start right down here right we can agree that this here is a corrective structure finishing okay we have this kind of low point down here that's pretty good we can argue that this might be uh, an irregular flat looking like this that's one way of looking at it uh, or we can just say that you know we've got a correction coming down here maybe in three ways either way one of the things that we do know is that this down here is going to be the low point which means we then start to move on up this wick causes me a problem right here. Don't like it. Elliott Wave Theory doesn't like it. Um, and it does mean that this entire structure is three waves going up. So we have to park that and say, okay, well, straight away in here, we go up in A, down in B, and up in C, right? It's just three waves. And I have to draw it like this because it's all happening in basically just one candlestick. You can kind of see them move up and pull back down and then up again. Okay, so we know that that's three waves going up. And we also have three waves going down just over here, right? We can see one, two, and three, uh, A, B, and C, or W, X, and Y. Um, ultimately, just three-way corrections and then we have this nice run upwards so you know the uneducated Elliott Way theory uh analyst might want to go one two three four five fantastic moonshot but that's not really valid and and so we have to be really objective about it um it doesn't look very good um from that standpoint this does look like it would go up in five waves though so we can say look one two three four and five and that looks pretty good and therefore that entire thing would just be a three three five right a regular flat correction just looking like that so the internal workings don't really stack up very well so far right we can kind of get ourselves to this point here and you know that would be typically what we would have liked to have called a wave one but a wave one uh, cannot be you know just three waves it should, should be five waves so we'd have to then look at this and think okay well is there something else going on here um outside of that and it doesn't really look like it i mean we'd want to kind of go one two kind of three four and five but i just don't think that's possible but let's go ahead and keep going and see if this uh, unravels anymore um it does look like we have a five wave structural move to the downside which in itself is odd and it's odd behavior um and yeah that is actually incredibly odd so it does actually mean that this can't even be five waves uh so reflect on that we would have to actually yeah no we can we can do it there uh just a little bit shorter we can go one two three four and five right in there and then all of this here becomes a uh irregular flat correction coming in here a b and c like so that makes a lot more sense okay so then we park that one down here so you can kind of see how we're kind of nesting this stuff together and it doesn't make terribly too much sense. And the reason for this one, by the way, guys, I don't know if I explained that, probably didn't explain it very well, is you can kind of see five wave structure coming down here. You can't just have five waves randomly on their own. They're at the beginning or the end of structures. So we have to kind of take, take those things into consideration. Then, of course, we move up here. And again, we don't really have an, a good kind of structure to this one either. There's no wave four. And it just looks like we go three waves with the wave C just overextending again. Coming down, we have pretty decent corrections on the way down these aren't anything too uh strange now of course we have this one coming up here this one we could probably liken to 
a five wave structure so at this this point here we start to get into a, a decent kind of area and i'll quite happily call this one impulsive in the way that these candles are actually stacking up together if i did come down into a 15 minute chart i've lost everything where is it um 15 minute chart and we are talking about this area over here i believe i'm gonna check that and just find the exact candles that i am referring to yeah so basically we have uh this one here a good move up so if i take this down to the 30 minutes we're talking this area here and if i take it into a 15 minute then we can really kind of dissect down what's going on in there and again in a very similar way we have this kind of run up wave two coming down here really good run coming up here and we have a nice wave four coming here and then an overextension into the fifth wave taking us up higher by the looks of it so all of that does look like five waves let me see if i can find the data that i keep losing now it's over here okay so this looks, does look like we have this kind of five wave structure coming in uh, into here, not a problem. And then we start to really come on up here. Okay, now, as I said, this actually looks like, a, um, a, to me, a wave one, wave two scenario. And all of this goes up into a, another five wave structure. And this five wave structure is quite good. Uh, we do have this uh, nice little kind of run coming in here. You can kind of see it. We just kind of went through this. Um, I would say, yeah, wave one, wave two, up here into our oh, way three by the looks of it or as i said an overextension here i think we're probably better off kind of taking a look at it like this um just to keep it nice and simple we'll kind of keep it like that that means that essentially what was going on is we kind of have ourselves here a five wave structure right in here okay and we come down and then we have this nice five wave structure here this puts us in a position to say that we might be uh, looking at a 335 all the way from the bottom to the upper end here now if i go ahead and draw this out we actually have one two three all of this being four and this is our fifth wave and the fifth wave looks to me like we are in an ending diagonal structure so let's go ahead and draw that out and see if that fits um, so we do have the correction coming down it's pretty much one candle not too concerned about that um, it's the movements to the upside i am more interested in okay so i think this is probably 335 coming coming in here and um, but we're losing that kind of momentum behind i'm going to draw this up as an a b and c like this then do actually you no know, take a look take stock let's check this this is interesting so i want to check this one uh we'll pull this down yep okay cool so we end in five so three three five coming here our c wave structure must end here and then we come down with this correction right in there okay now of course we come on up now the other thing to kind of bear in mind is we might want to consider this five and we haven't pierced it so it's possible that actually our correction here isn't done and that could be interesting so let's run with the theory that this hasn't completed uh yeah let's run with the theory that this hasn't completed so uh, invalidation on this run would happen up here Okay, so our invalidation line is 2.183. Um, we'll assume that we actually we've got to come down further and our correction hasn't done. So we haven't finished this correction. So we'll look for uh, doing something like this. Uh, essentially, this would be the wave two. This would be the wave one. We then have to break on upwards afterwards. So let's go ahead and assume a couple of things here. Um, this will help us kind of plot out where we think things are going to go so we're going to take these over here we'll assume that we'll come down to uh, this low of about 2032 uh, down to a little bit lower possibly if we needed to come down into the lows of 1.999 okay so i'm going to mark that there that's going to be our wave two low point somewhere in this kind of range here okay now if i go ahead and take this measurement of our wave one or our first three wave structure we'll take it over and i'm going to put it onto the higher side because it's going to give us the worst case scenario for the next uh, worst case or best case it depends how you want to look at it it's going to give us the worst case for plotting out the uh, the triangle uh, the uh, ending diagonal pattern um, and obviously uh, best case in terms of pricing but nonetheless we'll, we'll see how that kind of goes so um, we would expect this to be three waves coming up and i've been looking to target out the 1.618 okay um, and that would be up here at 2.375 on vchain okay that's going to be the targeted range then i would be looking for another three wave drop to the downside and i would look for overlap on the 2.83 uh 2.183 i would look for that and then i would look for one final move to don't need a fib i need just uh, another kind of move up into the final fifth wave all in all this would be an ending diagonal structure um now i could have over uh, estimated this because it does look like it's probably going to be a bit too much for for everything on there but you know we'll see how it kind of plays out um, but essentially a little bit more to the upside i don't think 2.5 is going to actually happen so we we'll probably have overestimated that quite a bit um so we'll see how that kind of goes it's possible that 
this is actually a, a flat correction and we're going up and then we've got to come down and so forth i, I just don't think we're really ready for that and um, so i'd be saying a little bit further to the upside there we'll see how it kind of plots out but it does to me look like this is going to be the ending of the structure it does not look like it's a trend reversal um, and it does mean that all of this here potentially is just three uh, three five going all the way through even including this here because we don't have a good start to this position um, overall so it looks like three three five up there and then potentially just w x and y uh, in total so w x and y like this um to kind of kind of pull it all together and think of it as kind of finishing um and that would basically mean that it's fair play for whatever happens next okay because if we're not doing any kind of trend five wave structure from the very bottom here um upwards and it's possible i guess that we kind of start halfway through but it wouldn't really make a terribly too much sense um so i'd be kind of interested to kind of see how this next structure kind of forms out where does it go how low are we thinking and all that kind of stuff so for now i'm going to be you know quite optimistic and say v chain can potentially push up a little bit higher in this ending diagonal and possibly you know we don't have to come down into new lower lows or anything like that i still am not that confident but i want to be optimistic about it so um we'll kind of see how the next structure goes to the downside i do personally think that we probably will be coming down into new lower lows when the rest of the economic kind of uh, fallout occurs right across the real world right outside of of just charts and things like that we've got a lot of things to be concerning ourselves with from a kind of global point of view in terms of you know job losses uh, inflation and and various other kind of things happening with the housing markets and and so forth the bond market and and all that kind of stuff so i'm i'm not thinking that we're there yet for you know big runs to the upside or anything like that and so i want to be really aware that essentially here i think yeah we want to be optimistic but uh and i don't want to see 1.5 get lost as a support level down here um but you know i think it is a possibility so we'll see how the structure goes down afterwards there's nothing here to stop it so um that's going to be interesting to kind of see how it all unfolds from our daily standpoint uh, it does look pretty decent from up coming up here in terms of our price points if i bring our stochastic rsi up though it is overbought that is uh something that we are concerned about taking a look at it from the volume profile um so the volume is still incredibly low even though the price action has gone up there's nothing terribly too unusual with that volume just check it out over here for example it's much greater volume over here than it was on this side so just kind of be aware of these things um, but for the most part um, I'm not terribly too concerned from that, um, but it'd be interesting to kind of keep an eye on. The RSI is really, really high. In fact, that's bearish divergence. So up here we can see um, that the price was significantly higher, um, but yet we are, our RSI has gone up higher, right? So um, price has gone down into lower highs, yet stock has, or RSI has gone up into higher highs. That would be bearish. So not looking good from that kind of standpoint. Um, so that's one to kind of keep an eye on. Um, the MACD is something that kind of came up in conversation, but looks pretty bad. In fact, I can't even actually draw this one out for some reason. So let me actually remove that off there and actually bring up a, a new MACD. Let's find it. Moving average convergence divergence um, just in here. Um, so there's talk and chatter about this but actually all i'm seeing here is a really high um <laughs> really really high uh, and actually a decrease in volume as well um on the macd macd is a, a lagging indicator as well i much prefer the stochastic rsi and um, so you know it to me on this daily chart it doesn't really give me terribly too much ground for confidence but you can see here that it's crossed as we kind of started to flip and move to the upside nothing terribly too unusual there um but yeah the volume profile is decreasing this happens you can kind of see it right in here so yeah it is what it is nothing good from that standpoint if i take a look at it from a weekly standpoint you can also see uh, we have got some uh, interesting volume decreasing over time uh, it's very clear on the macd as well uh, and your cross actually happened way over here uh, in july yet in august we still fell down in price just understand that the macd is not a good predictive indicator um, and it's very very laggy I, I don't like it personally so i'll remove it from the chart and i like to focus on the stochastic rsi that is almost overbought on the weekly time frame here for v chain so yeah i'm looking at the def cross looming here on the 250 em as well you can see that on the weekly chart ultimately guys I'm, I'm i'm still feeling quite bearish um i do like the green in the market i want the bull run to start i just don't think it started yet let me know your thoughts in the comments down below other than that guys have a fantastic day and i'll catch you all in the next one